What you guys got another video here for you. Let's talk about privacy or even Windows privacy. A lot of people in the comments section I see all the time talking about privacy and their privacy concerns when it comes to operating systems like Windows. I can't remember how many times I've seen it, but it's a lot when people will tell you that I value my freedom and I value my privacy. So that's why I use Linux. And that's what they will tell you in the comment section. These people are obviously not very informed when it comes to privacy because privacy is way bigger than just Microsoft Windows. The problem is absolutely massive because we live in a digital age where pretty much every device has a connection to the internet. And this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And by the end of this video, hopefully, you'll have some more clarity on privacy and how much privacy you have. So if you are talking about Linux in general in the comments section and saying, I value my privacy and that is why I use Linux. Well, good for you, but you are not private on the internet. And I'll tell you why, because we're going to go through every single step right here to prove a point to you. Now, the funny thing is they're saying all of this on social media. Of course, this could be YouTube, Facebook, it could be X or Twitter, it could be Discord, it could be anything. And these are all harvesting information. And of course, you would have to give up email addresses. They're moaning about email addresses on Windows. And guess what? You've got to give up email addresses on all of these platforms and sometimes even your real name and address. So unless you're willing to give up social media, you're not private on the internet, whether you're on Windows or Linux. Next is that little mobile phone in your pocket or on the side. That is a listening and speaking device. It also has GPS location. And no matter what you're doing on your phone, it's always listening. And it will tell you exactly where your location is. So unless you want to get rid of your phone and dismantle it and stop using it, because if you are using it, then you are not private because you cannot be private using a phone. Now, I've seen even people suggesting using a operating system like these ones I'm showing you here for Android and OS X. And these are for sort of de-googled phones. These are to get away from all the telemetry and stuff. But you still have to trust these people that have created these particular operating systems. How would you know that these people are not harvesting your information? You just simply wouldn't know. And you still have to connect to your phone carrier, which will be able to get information from you that way and monitor your usage and your information and the calls you're making. So it's not really private, is it? And this goes for your telephone. These calls were being monitored since before the 1950s by the government. So that's not really private either, is it? It might not be a smart device, but people still used it to communicate with each other. And that moves on to the smart devices in your home, whether they're Wi-Fi cameras, whether they're smart watches, whether they're smart rings, smart pendants, whether it'll be Robovax, whatever it may be, they've all got Wi-Fi connection to them and they're all calling home to the manufacturer. And of course, these devices are also got microphones on them, which are listening devices. So and smart devices are very popular today, whether it'll be your uh, Amazon devices or Google devices in your home. People use those and they're communicating with them. They've got their screens on them, your alarm system. Everything has some form of smart device capability, even your washing machine. So you have to bear in mind that all of these devices are always listening and the Amazon devices are super sensitive. I mean, I've been all the way downstairs and I've said something and that microphone has picked it up. So how powerful is the microphone in these devices? So this goes alongside with all your other devices we talked about, like your mobile phone. You have now got all of these all over your home and even outside your home with security cameras and door locks. These are all smart devices. We are living in the digital age where this is pretty common today and lots of people are using them so if you're one of these people that's completely not into this sort of thing then you're one of the minority because lots of people do use them and even door locks like this where they will open up with a wi-fi connection like this are very common nowadays and you've also got the other tv remotes that have got microphones on them the little android boxes that you can purchase 
And also your TV even has a camera and also microphone built into it where it connects to the internet and it's calling home. These devices are in people's homes. And yet a lot of these people are obsessed with Microsoft Windows and it's becoming a major problem where people are on the internet commenting about Microsoft Windows and yet you've got a TV remote in your hand watching your TV at home that is calling home and probably listening to everything you say. And a lot of these are unavoidable. This goes on to this one, which is totally unavoidable, which is facial recognition on CCTV. These are everywhere in the UK and probably are in other countries as well, whether it be in a bar, in a hotel, whether it be in a tube station, on a train station, your face is being picked up on every single camera from the time you leave your home to the time you reach your destination. And they will know the time you was there. They will pick you up with your phone in your pocket or whether it be on a camera and they can pinpoint and track you all the way there by accessing these cameras. Even video doorbells will be able to pick you up walking past and record you. Even if you hide your face with your glasses and your mask on, it's not going to help you because you might be thinking at least they can't get a facial recognition on me by looking like this. But who wants to live their life like that? What are you actually worried about and what are you doing? You know, you're going to go into a bar, a cafe, whatever it may be, you will be able to be picked up by that camera. So you can't hide. And that makes you realize how stupid it really is. And with us moving towards a cashless society, you're going to jump on a bus or a tram or whatever it may be, underground. You're going to jump on one of these trains and you will have to pay with your card, which is registered to your name. And that is how they will track you. Maybe you like to go on holiday. Well, guess what? You won't be going on holiday because as soon as you walk into the airport, you're picked up by cameras and you will then obviously have to give them your passport. Now you have to give fingerprints and they will be taking your photograph as you walk through. So how are you going to avoid it? Maybe when you get to a hotel, they ask for your passport or driving license or some form of identification or maybe a payment method. A lot of hotels will ask for your passport if you're in another country. And of course, this will mean they know who you are and where you are coming from. And literally, the government at their country will know. Go into your bank to pull cash out of your account. If you don't want to use a, a digital currency, you might be one of the old school and think cash is king. But unfortunately, the bank will not give you money willy-nilly when you go and ask for it. Even though it's your money, they will ask you what the money is for and why you want to take out such a large sum of money. So they would obviously know your name, your photograph, and what you're doing. Banking online will be another a way of tracking and tracing you. How are you going to hide your identity when you bank online? You cannot use cash the way you used to back in the old days. We are going into a digital age. When you're on a plane, you have to use your card. And a lot of purchases are all card only. They don't take cash anymore. You can't buy a car with cash anymore. It's all card. And this is the thing. You have to realize even when you're shopping online, whether it'll be on Amazon or any other place online where you're shopping, it's making a profile of you, your shopping habits. Your credit card knows your shopping habits. That's how it protects you. So you can't hide. I don't know anyone who doesn't shop online. And it goes for paying bills too. Maybe you have to pay bills. Most of these are done online. Most people will pay for their bills online, whether it'll be your cancel tax, whether it be your rent, your mortgage, this will be done via your bank. They know how much money you've got in your bank, what your spending habits are, where you spend your money on a regular basis, your accounting, your tax man, everything will go through uh, and be digitally uh, kept. And you cannot hide from that. We are living in an age where it is not possible to uh, avoid these types of things. Digital ID has just been announced. They want to try and get that over the line. They want to be able to access your bank accounts. They want to be able to see what you're doing, monitor and control everything you're doing. You as an individual can 
only complain and moan and also uh, maybe go on a march or something like that, but it's not going to stop if they want to introduce it. You're not going to be able to stop it. What about when you go to work? You have to give up information, uh, your bank details, all this stuff. This is privacy. But the thing is, your bank will probably know uh, exactly when your money's going in, what's going out. And of course, your company will know everything about you for pensions and things like that you take out with your company. Uh, what about those people that don't work? Well, that's fine. If you don't work and you're on benefits, which it seems like a lot of people are, because they seem to always be in the comments section. And if you are on benefits, that means you are still being monitored because you have to sign on and you have to give them all your precious information. Whether you're on disability or whether you're on uh, you know, benefits, they will know a lot about you. Your doctor knows everything since the day you was born about you, what conditions you've got, what medicine you take, uh, whether you need medicine, whether you're depressed, whether you're not depressed, it's all written down and it's all there. But here you are worrying about Microsoft Windows when all of this stuff is privacy. It's all private. A lot of the doctors have gone to this triage system where you have to go online, fill out forms, give them your passport, give them all this stuff to set up an account and to create an appointment for yourself. This is how it's all going. It's the same thing for hospital. You can't even go to hospital without having an account there so they can literally track and check you for your appointments and things like that. It makes things super easy. What about your dentist? Why do you think the police go to the dentist and to the doctors and the hospital to find out information about you? Because they know everything about you. And this is how they solve crime. Again, census records, we all have to fill them out. And these have information about how much savings you have, how many ices you've got, uh, how many people live in your family, what job you do, how much you earn, do you own your own house, all this sort of stuff. And this is all sensitive information and it gets sent off. And it's a, it's law that you have to fill that out. Maybe you've got a criminal record from the past. They know everything about you too. So would the police. And this is the thing. It's privacy, but you have no control over it. Now, there might be a majority of people that don't have a criminal record, but I'm just giving you the information so you can see the magnitude of the privacy problem that you're trying to fix. Emails. People send emails all the time. And of course, these are not secure. And if you're putting sensitive information in an email, then you're not as smart as you think you are. You can use other ways of sending mail just like this. But of course, people then use these to create fake accounts online, to be nasty online. And this is the problem. And you could use Proton Mail as well, which is another way of using it. Unless you're encrypting your email really seriously, then it's not secure. And again, you wouldn't be putting sensitive and personal information in an email because it's not secure. But there is people out there that will use uh, these throwaway email accounts to be nasty online and troll people or send threatening emails or, you know, dox people. This is how people have become online. And again, if you want to browse the Internet, maybe you want to use a different browser to Microsoft Edge or one of the other browsers out there. There's plenty to choose from. And again, you can choose whichever flavor suits you. But at the end of the day, you still have to put in information in your browser, whether you're on Windows or Linux. It really doesn't matter. Your search history is all traceable and you can scrub your uh, search history and everything you download on the Internet is also traceable. But you think they're really monitoring just you on your own and what you're searching for and what you're downloading I really don't think so, but you'll get the paranoid people out there that will go as far as starting to take serious measures to try to mask their identity online by using Tor browsers, which has obviously been uh, breached and leaked as well before, but people always claim that it's impossible. But there is always a way to find information if they want it, and this is how this has always been. And maybe you want to use a VPN because they'll use a VPN as well as a Tor browser. Uh, but again, it's you're now having to trust your VPN company. And most of them have given people up in the past, so I really wouldn't put a lot of faith in a VPN client either. So it just depends on what you're trying to achieve online. What are you actually doing online 
that makes you so concerned about what is being collected. Maybe you want to change your DNS from your ISP's DNS, but then who's monitoring that DNS server? And of course, they could tell you you've got complete anonymity. No one's going to be monitoring it. No one's collecting information. But how would you know? And then it could also be a data breach, just like there was on Discord recently, where they started finding information out about uh, information that people have submitted where they said it was destroyed immediately and of course it wasn't and this is the problem you're putting a lot of faith in a, you know things that you're setting up on your pc that you have no control over and you're letting your paranoia for privacy take control of your life and if you're feeling like that then maybe the internet is not for you and you shouldn't be on the internet whatsoever because there'll be people that tell you don't use Google search. Google search is one of the best search engines out there. But they'll tell you to use DuckDuckGo because it's more private. But again, that's the choice is yours at the end of the day. But how would you know DuckDuckGo doesn't get breached and it doesn't uh, disclose information to people? You just wouldn't know until it happens. Even your antivirus will be seeing every website you go to because it has to because it's scanning that website to make sure there's no malware on there to protect you. And your browser does that too. And this is the thing. You you just don't realize how big the privacy problem is. It's bigger than what you think. And stop blaming Microsoft for everything because the problem's bigger than that. Using fake online names. This is what you've been told since the beginning of time. If you want to communicate with your friends, they're telling you to use applications like Signal for a bit more secure. But who uses that and who wants to do that? People jump on Discord. People jump on other platforms to talk to their friends by their phone. So unless you're willing to disengage on everything we've talked about, even getting in your car will be able to monitor your voice. So stop being paranoid about privacy because you have none. Unless you want to live somewhere like this all on your own, and completely off grid. But even then, I don't think you can still be off grid completely because you have to purchase the land that you're living on. But other than that, I think that's going to be about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And hopefully, this video will help you understand how difficult it is to be private. In fact, it's probably impossible. But people will continue to mislead you and tell you that you can be when you really can't. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.